Hello and welcome to Stress Less with me, Jess. Today, my special guest is Tom Fenty. Hi, Tom. Hello, Jessica. And how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well as well. I'm so excited to have you on here. You know, I have a different kind of um, marketing people that come on here as well, but you do a lot of the filmmaking and the video producing part of your business. And I would love to kind of talk about that today. Um, so before we even get into any of that, what got you into the business that you're in today? Sure. Well, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. So I started when I was in graduate school for film. I went to I went undergraduate. I went to Rutgers and, and my first graduate degree, I went to the new school in the West Village in Manhattan. And I have a master's in media studies. And through that prog pro program, I really learned the process of making a film and producing a film. And I made one. I made a feature film during that time called At the Jersey Shore, which all oh, of these cool. years later is uh, out of Paramount Plus. And actually, people are contacting me re just recently because it got uh, re really distributed on these different platforms like Paramount. It's on Amazon Prime as well, Epic's. And uh, yeah, so I made my thesis project, a, a narrative feature film called At the Jersey Shore. During that time, I filmed it in 09 and 2010, and it came out in 2012 on all these different platforms. And then it's continuing to, to build an audience all these years later. So I learned the process of, of telling a story, how to write a script, how to actually film, how to work with um actors and things like that really i mean the basic of what i basis of what i do is is really just storytelling and yeah. that's where it all started so a couple of years after that i, I brought that skill set to local businesses to restaurants to doctors to lawyers to bars um, and i just started creating marketing video content for them and then all these years later now i'm working with big organizations pharmaceutical companies distribution companies uh tech companies startups all that and I love the process. A lot of times people ask me, oh, what do you like better making like narrative films or, or marketing videos? And, and to me, I, it's, I just love storytelling. I love bringing the pieces together to tell one cohesive story. And it, I really enjoy working with clients and finding out who they are, what they do, and then putting all that information in a way that's compelling and creative and it's, and it's going to engage an audience. So cool. So first of all, let's go back to the beginning because that is so cool. You know, at the Jersey Shore, you're the, you know, you're the name behind everything. That is so awesome. So congrats on that. Super Thank awesome you. accomplishment. So I hear storytelling and as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, that is something we're told all the time, especially when it comes to marketing. Tell your story, tell your story. And I think for some of us, that can be kind of hard. So how do you really help us kind of paint the picture of our story? Because it's our story and why we do what we do. But a lot of times it's just like, well, I'm just really good at this and I really like this. So what's my story? Can you help kind of guide some lines that? Sure. It all starts with a basic conversation and learning about the particular business owner, um, how they got into the business, what really makes them stand out. What are some unique capabilities and qualities and experiences that make them shine in their field? Because we all we're all doing something hopefully that we love, but how do we, how do we take that information and make it, make it into a compelling story? Like you said, so it all starts with that initial conversation and just understanding what the, the consumer is looking for. Like what, what's going to resonate with the consumer more than anything else, right? We have this information on paper. We know we can read a little bit about the, the company and the business owner, but how can we, we take that information and make it viable for the consumer? So I think that's, really what it all comes down to and understanding what your brand values are, what you stand for, and then making sure that your, your audience really understands that. And the way that you do that is, is telling it in a creative way. So using your creative expertise, working with an organization like myself to take this information that might be very stagnant and dry and paper, but we can put it together in a way that communicates a real message and meaning to an audience. Yeah. So I'm thinking video. So when you're talking video, is it the business owner that's in the video? You, I know you mentioned actors earlier. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it all depends. Sometimes, uh, you know, I think a lot of times having the business owner in the video can help, is just, uh, particularly if they're on the front lines of whatever they do. But we can hire actors. It all depends on the scope of the project. So we can create more like branding content, which really just highlights the brand values. We can do marketing content which we, were, we, were, we would interview the main players. We would interview people that have, have done business with this organization, have a positive experience 
incorporate that with some B-roll footage of them working with the clients. So it really, it really all, all depends. Yeah. That's so cool. That's it's so detailed of everything that you're doing. You really do pretty much all of the work for the business owner and that takes a lot of stress away. So that's, that's amazing. If a business, what should a business owner when they're doing their own research, right. And they're looking for, okay, so let's do real quick. Why would a business owner need a video for their business? I mean, I think in today's age, everything is digital. Everything is online. Uh, having a video, I think, is just imperative. I mean, I really think it's it's almost akin to having a website because when we go to the website, what's what's on it? Just a lot of times it, there's just information that doesn't really uh, connect with an audience. So let's create a two minute uh, video that highlights who they are, what they do, what makes them special and unique and gives us some branding value as well. So the audience knows like, this is what this organization stands for. This is what's going to resonate with an audience. So I think it's incredibly important uh, in today's age. Also, we, we create video content for social media. So every organization or just about every organization has or should have social media. And instead of just pictures, now we can create video content as well that really showcases them doing what they, what they do and, and what they're passionate about. So you create the videos and then you also are able to kind of cut them and snip them down and put them on to people's social media as well? Definitely. Yeah. So usually it all depends on what the client's looking for, but a, a typical package would include one overview video, which is roughly two minutes in length. And then we'll also create upwards of six social media videos, which are between 15 and 30 seconds in length that they could use on their social channels. And, and um, just recently I got into running social channels for clients. So I'm actually creating the content and then I'll distribute it in, in, a, in a way that highlights best practices. So they'll really get an impact from the, the content we're creating. Oh, that's so cool. Social media, again, I know we're talking videos and marketing, all that kind of really ties in a bow of so stressful. We no, Most business owners do not want to do any of that. So that's so amazing. When a business owner or entrepreneur is looking for a video production company, right? They know that they know the importance of it. What are some key things they should be looking for when they're finding the right one for their company? I think having an organization that understands the basics of narrative storytelling, I think that's really important because you can get this the footage, but how do you edit the footage in a way that's really going to make an impact? How do you put it all together in a way that's going to highlight who you are, what you do, and also resonate with an audience? So I think basic storytelling skills come into play first and foremost. And then obviously you want someone who's uh, have, has the technical capabilities to create really good looking, vibrant content. And you want to be able to work with someone that you just have a, a good connection with because you're, you are working with uh, these organizations. Um, you are working with production companies and, and you're opening yourself up to these organizations and you're showcasing really how you you do what you do and what makes you special. So you want to have a good connection with whoever, whoever it is that you're working with. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh, I love that. Yeah, very important. Like you said, the basic story time, which I feel like you've kind of really hit on throughout every question I've ever asked you since you know, the beginning is storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. So I feel like that's something you're really trying to drive home is how important it is to tell a story through whether it's your videos, your social media, and like you mentioned earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, it really ties into your brand as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The storytelling and communication, I think, is is really key. And that's what makes me stand out. I, I, I'm i someone, I really, I'm a writer, I'm an editor, and I know how to just, I know how to tell good stories. I know how to really just engage an audience. I know the basics, but I also know how to do it in a way that just really resonates. And that's my, my strongest skill set for sure. I definitely agree with that because I was on your website and your main video right now is the woman walking through the, like the, the trail. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm just sitting there. I want to go like, you know, do my background research on you. And I'm just sitting there watching the video. I'm going, oh, wait, I got to like, start <laughs> digging a little bit more and I'm looking at it. But I just stopped to kind of just, oh, this is really, it really caught my attention. There's plenty of other websites where I've been on where they all have videos now, right? It's more and more uncommon, but I just scroll through Yours automatically plays and automatically caught my attention. I just go, huh, <laughs> stopped what I was doing to just watch the video. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So that's awesome. That's awesome. When when people make videos, all right, so in the sense of telling my story, knowing my brand, does it really drive traffic to my website to make sales? Like how does a video of telling my story work that way? Definitely. So 
Yeah, I mean, that's a, a great question. So you have the video, it's like, well, you have this great video, but how are people watching it? And if they're not already on your site or they don't know to come to your site, like how are you getting new customers? And that's a, a great, great question. And the way that you do it is through social media outreach. Also just, uh, you know, for any business owner like myself, you're going to events. So you're highlighting your brand in person. Um, you're, you're doing LinkedIn outreach, just like I do uh, on a daily basis. So you're doing these, these ways of, of personal outreach, but you have this great video as a way to highlight who you are. And you could do that through in-person events and showcasing your website in the video. You can do that through LinkedIn outreach, through, through social media as well. And then there's also paid things that you can do. So you could pay for YouTube advertising. You could pay for Google search and have the video as a part of that or well, or, or even do um, not only digital marketing, but you could put the the video on, on cable television as well. And that's a lot of my clients too. So. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Cause it's definitely still a thing, even whether you watch the live stream or you, you know, do the normal cable as well, that there's, there's definitely commercials going through. That's didn't think about that. That's smart. Yeah, it's definitely something I think a lot of us think about is like, okay, well, I'm going to spend all this money on a video and it's kind of the then what, right? So what am I actually going to get from it? So you're saying there's different kind of avenues that really will benefit me getting this video out there. Definitely. Yeah. So like I mentioned, so it's it's something as you're promoting yourself, you're promoting your website in person on LinkedIn, on social media. So you have this video. So when people come to the site, you're doing the promotion, they're coming to the site and they're, they're getting more information about you, just like you did when you came to my site. There's also, if you go to trade shows, a lot of my clients, I'll create video content. They go to a trade show, they have the video up on a, a screen there and it highlights branding. It highlights what they do, who they are. So they're there in person, but they have this, this backdrop of a cool video that we created that also showcases um, the compelling aspects of their business as well. So it's it's all part of the process. And then, like I said, you could put the video on, on cable television. You could you could spend money on YouTube advertising. You could also put it on YouTube and, and incorporate some cool keywords that if people are searching for whatever the product or service that you provide, potentially it could come up in those, um, in those searches based on the keywords that you provide as well. And then also was also a really great part of video production is now we're talking about search engine optimization. So video is a big part of that. So when you have a compelling video on YouTube, you put that video on your website, now you're increasing your search engine optimization. So it all works very holistically to increase your brand awareness through in-person events, through social media outreach, through LinkedIn outreach, through uh, trade shows, and then through also through search engine um, uh, marketing. Uh, when people are searching for your product or service, now you have a better shot at coming up on the first page of Google with your website and then with the video as well. I feel you're really hitting on so many pain points as a business owner, SEO, social media, marketing, website, right? Like you're hitting on all these points, branding, storytelling, right? All these things that are so important and it's all in one spot. I think right there that takes away so much uh, stress and pressure from other people. So it's not they have to go to you for one thing. They have to go to a different person for a different thing. It sounds like everything is under all in one roof. And I think that kind of takes a lot of pressure and stress off a lot of companies as well. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, now nobody knows the business better than the, the business owner themselves, but where a company like myself comes in and where I come in is I can help you understand how you can use this information and, cr and create a compelling video that tells your story in a way that's going to be viable for the audience. So, and uh, people not only do they not have the time, but they don't necessarily have their skill set. If you're not involved in communication, if you're not involved in storytelling, then you might not know how to take this information and put it together in a way that's going to resonate with an audience. And that's where my business comes in. How often should we be updating our video? So say we have a video, how often should that uh, uh, video be being updated? I think that all depends on the client. It all depends on the industry. So I think that is client specific. I think it's industry specific, but I definitely think there's value in creating videos at least once a year, every couple of years to just give us some new insight of, of what you've been doing uh, since the last time we saw you, right? So how, uh, you know, has, has the, have the, have the brand values changed? Have you worked with different clients? Are you trying to get into different sectors? Like that all could be done by creating continual videos and highlighting just any new things that you're working on. Yeah. Oh, this is so awesome. What do you think is the biggest takeaway you want a business owner to take from this episode today? Um, that's a good, that's a good question. I think just that 
you know, every, it seems like everyone understands the the power of video content, but I don't think everyone understands what it entails. And it's not really that difficult to do. If you bring a, a, a provider on board that really understands, like we talked about storytelling and understands how to go about taking the information and putting it together in a compelling way, then I think it's it's just going to be a great benefit for your organization. I think it's going to help, like we talked about, in all the different aspects of search engine optimization and trade show marketing and in-person marketing and social media marketing. It's just a huge benefit to your organization. And why not use it as a way to stand out? The process is not that difficult. Um, it's just a matter of understanding its value and understanding your value as an organization and incorporating it in video content to showcase to really to the world who you are, what you do and what you represent. Yeah, I love this. What is the best way for someone to contact you? Oh, you can go to my website. So it's suburbaniteproductions.com. There's a portfolio tab at slash portfolio. You can see all the work that I've done. Um, and you can just contact me directly. Uh, I'm on all social media channels. Tom Benty. Um, LinkedIn is my most uh, one I use most for, for corporate work. Um, just uh, Tom at suburbaniteproductions.com. Uh, and you can just go to my website, suburbanite. I'm sorry, suburbaniteproductions.com. And you can contact me there. And everything will be repeated. So all your information will be repeated in the uh, podcast notes or wherever you found this episode at. Everything's going to be repeated in the notes for you. <clears throat> Great. Tom, before I get started to the lightning round, are you ready? I think so. All right. I'm let's excited. Go. I'm a little nervous, but <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. All right. <clears throat> there we go. What is the movie that you can watch on repeat? Rocky. Rocky. <laughs> Instant. I love it. Right, because you're you're Philly crowd, so I gotta say, uh I got you know, I, I love Rocky, but in for the for the Philly people out there, I'm from New York, but I do I do love Rocky. I'm a big movie person, as you can imagine. Goodfellas, Godfather, um, Apocalypse Now. Um there's so many, but I, you know, right off the top, Rocky. I love it. Well, speaking of Philly fans, who are you rooting for for the Super Bowl this year? Uh, you know, you're, you're probably not going to like me, but I'm a Giants fan. So I, I probably the Chiefs, unfortunately. And just like that, the podcast has ended. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'm honest. I'm saying staying true to my brand values. Right. If I said, hey, oh, I'm a Philly fan all of a sudden for my whole life being a Giants fan, knowing the history between the teams, you probably would lose respect for me or you should. You should lose respect for me. If I said that. So. I'm not going right. to say that. Fair I'm game. being honest. Fair, game. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Um, okay. What was a childhood candy that you always had to have? Milky Way. Well, Milky, Milky Way? Milky Way, yeah. Um, where's your favorite place to vacation? Oh, come on. Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Maybe, you know, maybe you grew out of it. I don't know. No, <laughs> definitely. Never. No, it's for life. For life. This, July and August. I'm there. You know where to find me. Those two months, I'm there. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I love it. So are you a texter or a talker? Like on the phone? I'd say both. I mean, I've got obviously new age. I mean, people text a lot, so I can do both. Uh, I haven't asked this one in a while. If you don't already have a boat, if you can name a boat, what would the, the name of your boat be? I can name a boat. Never got that question. Um, if I can name a boat, what would the name of the boat be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe something like generic, like Carpe Diem or uh, <laughs> New Day, maybe New Day. New Day. I like it. I like it. And um, I got a couple more. Favorite day of the week? That's a good question. Favorite day of the week? Probably Friday. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Friday's great. If you had one adv advice for a new business owner, what would it be? It's a lot of time. It's a lot of work. It's not easy, but it's very fulfilling. And if you have a passion for whatever it is that you do, I totally recommend it. Oh, that's, I love that. That's sweet. All right. Last one, I promise. What is your way that you relieve stress? Working out. Definitely big into working out, uh, both cardio, calisthenics, but it's a big part of my life. So that's a, a, not only for physical health and well-being, but also for emotional as well. 
I agree. Tom, I'm so excited. Thanks so much for coming on my podcast today. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Always a, always a pleasure. I really appreciate this. Of course, of course.